So with Studio One version six, we have a really cool new feature, which is called Track Presets. So I'm gonna open up my Instruments tab in my browser over here. I'm gonna to navigate to a folder. I'm working on creating some presets. Take a look at what happens when I drag one of these in. So I have an instance of contact over here. And within this instance, I've loaded a very specific instrument, which is Spitfire Chamber Strings. The main patches they have, violins one, two, violas, celli, basses, and ensembles. I wanted to at least create track presets for these main patches because I do use this library a lot. So before we go any further, let's take a moment and talk about instrument plus effects presets. So we're in our instrument tab. Let's collapse this and let me load, uh, which one is it over here? This one, I'm gonna load this. This is an instrument plus effects preset. So instrument plus effects presets is kind of like, I guess you could say the previous version of this type of feature. And this allowed you to do some pretty great stuff in terms of setting multi-out routing. You could give things custom names. Um, sometimes maybe you might want to have very specific settings in terms of like EQs and compressors and stuff that are sitting on the individual channel. And for that reason, these were kind of like one of the things that I really like to use when I needed to load something that just came in exactly as I needed it and ready to work. That being said, there's a few other things that come to mind when we talk about bringing in a virtual instrument and having it be in, in like a play ready state. So for example, we know about effects and we know about loading, for example, um, a, a preset of contact or something. But what about things like, for example, all of these settings over here? Like what about our transpose? What about if I wanted to, this to be minus six? And what about if I had a transpose value? What about if I wanted to have an effect on here, like an EQ, maybe I wanted to have a very, very specific preset that's already in place. And maybe I want to have some effects in terms of some reverb and delay, uh, but I don't want to have that sitting on the actual channel, which is what we had to do with instrument plus effects presets. Maybe I want to have my send over here. Maybe in addition to a reverb, I also want to have a delay. So this one sound now, instead of being just one track, which is kind of what we had with instrument plus effects presets, we have a lot of different things that are making up this sound. And in addition to things like just for example, the actual preset that was loaded, um, custom names, custom colors, we also have, for example, the uh, sound variations that work with this very specific instrument to take into place. So now we have stuff from the console, we have stuff from settings, EQs, we have sends, we have some very custom transpose settings and some velocity stuff. You could also have some gain adjustments in your channel. Now watch what happens in this case. If I wanted to store this as a state that I can just drag something in and begin instantly working because this is a really great sounding patch right out of the gate. I'm going to right click this and let's click store track preset. Now I've already exported this one. So let's give it another name. We'll just say with effects and settings, something like that. And let's go ahead and click OK. Now, if I scroll up here to my track folder, let's now right click and we will remove instrument and track. And let's also remove both of these. If I take this file over here and I drag this in, take a look at what happens. It has recalled the actual instrument that was used. It has a custom name for the instrument rack. It has a custom sound variation that I'm using. It has a very specific contact preset that's loaded. It has a very specific setting in order for this preset to work with my arc conductor sound variations. It has the minus six transpose. It has a velocity. It has the gain change. It has the EQ. It has both sends intact. It's just recalling it exactly as it was. If I have one complaint, I would love for it to respect the fact that I like to have my automation track for every single effects channel. That's the way I prefer to work. But I mean, that's very easy for me to just do a single click and get these back. But the whole point is it has recalled everything. Now, if we, for example, wanted to do something like this, let's take all of these. I'm going to right click and I'm going to pack these into a folder and let's call this um, Spitfire. We'll just call it Spitfire now. Okay. And I want to give this a custom name as well. So I'm going to give this a custom name or rather a custom color. So now all of the tracks that we have, and let's make these two yellow as well. This one to this one, everything here is going to be all yellow and it's going to be kind of like part of a packet that we can see 
everything together. And also while we're at it, let's link this to a bus. So we're gonna make this a bus. So this one sound is sitting in a folder. It has two effects returns. It has a virtual instrument. There's tons of settings, and settings involved here. If I collapse this and I now right click and store track preset, let's go in folder and we will click okay. Right now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna remove this track. I'll remove the instrument and effects and let's remove these two. So now we're starting from a blank slate. Let's say I wanted that exact setup that I just had. I can now go over here and we will go Spitfire in folder. I'm gonna drag this over, take a look at what happens. It has just brought in everything. I have everything over here that I had. It has all the custom colors, it has all the settings, anything that I had made in terms of adjustments here, everything is brought over. So for this reason, I think this is an incredible feature because a lot of the times we don't just have a preset that we're, we're recalling and it's not simple. Like I said, there's key switches involved. There's transport settings involved. Maybe you wanna load a bass instrument or a cello or a viola and maybe you're working with a 25 key keyboard and you always want to keep that keyboard in like C2 or C3. In that case, it would be worthwhile to have the transport down like minus two or something like that so that whenever you're playing, you're triggering stuff in the octave you want. In the cases where you want to make reverb effects, you know, delays, things like that, these can be tailored any way you want and made very, very specific. So for that reason, I'm absolutely loving uh, this style of workflow. Now, while we're here and before we go, I've pretty much covered everything that I want in terms of instrument tracks. I'm gonna do a separate video for audio, but let's remove these for now. And I'm gonna take all of these as well and let us remove everything here. I wanna actually take a look at creating one of these from scratch. I'm gonna take both of these and let's delete this and we will click delete. And now I'm actually going to really quickly just re-index my presets. Whenever you delete a preset or something or you add something manually, it's a good idea to actually just re-index your presets. This will do kind of like a full scan, the same as if you had just opened up Studio One and um, it, it goes through and scans all the presets. So if you've made any changes, that gets up, auto-updated. All right, that's done. What I want to do in this last part of the video is actually go through how I make these because um, there's a lot to take into account and there's a lot of cool things that can be added. So we're, we're just going to do one together. So I think what we'll do is we'll use this as a starting point. So I'm gonna drag in this track preset, which just has the basis patch from Spitfire Chamber Strings and we'll, we'll use this as a starting point. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to load the contact instance that I wanna make. So it's going to be f-ensembles.nki. I'm using this exact same naming convention in my track preset names because I just think it's easier for my brain. We'll drop this in. We're going to let this load. Now, the other thing I wanna do is I wanna give my track and my channel a specific name that matches this, but it doesn't have to be the full name, but for this case, I could call it ensembles. I'm kind of just taking a short form. Now, as I push enter, watch what happens to the channel names over here. These are obviously going to adopt the same channel name. Now, I'm also gonna double click this, Command C. I'm gonna come up to my instrument rack and I want to rename this, because I want this to match. If I'm looking at my instrument rack, I don't wanna see contact, contact two, contact three. I have no idea what it is. I wanna know exactly what it is so I can double click and open it. Now. There's a couple more things in order for us to kind of move forward and be done with this. The first thing is I need to make sure that I'm loading the proper sound variations. I'm gonna click this option over here and under the sound variations, I'm going to make sure that I'm using, where are they here? I'm using the Art Conductor versions. This is an add-on that you can get. I've done a video for it. I'll link it in the description if you're interested, but it's a great way to work if you like to work with different libraries or if you collaborate with people. It basically uses kind of like a standardized key switch mapping or sound variation mapping, which makes it super, super easy to work uh, with respect to like using the same instrument parts and copying them to other tracks that they will play 95 or 98%, they will play as expected. So we're gonna go to Spitfire Audio and I need to find the Chamber Strings folder, which is right over here. And these are organized by patch. So I'm just grabbing the same name as my actual uh, preset that I'm using, which is Ensembles. Okay, now we've loaded the actual key switch variation. I need to do one more thing within contact to make sure that this plays properly and that is locked to UACC key switch. 
So now I've actually got a MIDI file that I can use to test here. And let's drag and drop this down. We'll open this up. And I just want to make sure that it's toggling through the proper key switches. And also, let's open up the editor as well. Now the cool thing about using this is, for example, if I were to drag in the violas, or really any instrument, because this instrument is using the Arc Conductor version of the sound variations, this is going to play without any issues. They are recognized across the board. Now if I click them on a blank instrument track that doesn't have anything, they're not recognized, but they're a great way to work especially if you like to collaborate and you like to work with different instruments and you want to mix things really easily. So this would be probably it as a starting point. Arguably, if I wanted to make any changes to the gain, this is something that I might do with the actual input gain on my channel right over here. And if I wanted to add any effects, like for example, if I wanted to add, um, you know, like an EQ or any sends or anything like that, this is something that I could do. Also, if I wanted to make any changes here, a big one for this would be delay. Lots of sample library developers, especially ones that make super high-end samples like this, they have a documentation somewhere where you can look up the patch and they will give you the suggested negative delay offset. Because when we record samples, you might have a sample that has an onset to the actual apex of the note, which would be happening, for example, on an exact downbeat. You might have like a something that happens, like a bow movement or something where it strikes into it. So with that in mind, a lot of these libraries, you can adjust a performance mode where it basically cuts into the sample and it allows you to play it so it's very responsive. But then as soon as you're done, you peel back the, the pre-buffer of that apex, if you will, and then you add a negative track delay. This is something that would be extremely useful to save in a track preset because you wouldn't really have to mess around with anything. Right out of the gate, you could just start recording. All right, but let's say that I'm done with this and I'm happy and I wanna save this. I'm going to right click and we're going to store a track preset. Now what I wanna do is I wanna follow the same naming convention. So actually let me first, let's copy, this is a little tip. If you click or right click, you can copy the text clipboard. This is the description that I used in Cello. Um, let's right click, actually first of all, let's get rid of this so it's not confusing. Right click, we are going to, Store track preset. I'm going to give this the same naming convention. We're going to go F space dash space ensembles. The description will paste from the other one. And I could call this ensemble ensembles patch P A T C H with art conductor sound variation presets. And I want to stick this in Spitfire chamber strings and click OK. All right. So now remove track end instrument. <clears throat> if I ever need to call up this patch, I can drag this over. And this is going to load everything exactly as I stored it so that we can basically just drag in this track preset and then we could immediately start playing whatever we need to. So track presets, really, really awesome. We focused really specifically on instrument parts and working with virtual instruments. I'm gonna cover audio in another track cause it's kind of similar, but slightly different. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this content and we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.